you're thinking, oh man, tuna fish, I, I can make it with mayo, without mayo, I can make it with a little white vinegar, maybe some onions, there's a million different ways to make a tuna salad. But have you thought about tuna fish for a pasta dish? Now, if we were in Europe, Quite honestly, the tuna that you, you get there, is, it's different. It's a different tuna fish than what we have here. But this dish will still work. And again, this is one of those types of things where, you know, growing up you didn't have a lot of money. And my mom and my grandma, they would just kind of come up with stuff uh, and kind of riff on some of the classic Italian dishes. This is one of those riffs where we're going to use the, um, the tuned, the tuned canna. The tuned canna, the can of tuna, the canned tuna, you know what I'm talking about. And we're going to make the dish with that. Uh, I happen to buy tuna packed in water and I'm just going to drain a little of the water off. I don't like the one packed in oil because let's be honest about it. If you're going to get packing that tuna fish and you're putting the oil in there, are you buying really good oil? Probably not, right? You're buying the cheapest stuff you can find. So I'm not going to eat that if I can help it. I'm starting my dish here with a nice olive oil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our garlic. And I'm going to get that flame going a little bit so we can get ourselves a little sizzle there. In the meantime, I've got some red onion. So here we go. Some julienne, some nice slices, some onion. So we got the garlic going. I think that's probably that's probably good for, for our, say, two orders of pasta. Eh, we cut it. Why not throw it in? Okay. So put that out of the way. Now, pasta dish, right? So what kind of pasta do we want to use? Well, this would work great with linguine. I have a little fettuccine today. We're going to use some fettuccine. So my water's boiling. Let that go probably about six or seven minutes. All right, so we got the oil and the garlic going. The garlic's starting to brown up a little bit. The onion's going to get nice and soft. I've got some really great Sicilian olives here. You can throw them in whole if you want. I'm just going to slice them up and Sicilian green olives, or if you have a favorite, you like the Kalamatas or something that you like at home, that's fine. We get our olives in there. Push that off the side for a little bit. So garlic's toasted. The onions are starting to soften up. We got our olives in there. I also got some diced tomato. I'm going to put, eh, we don't want to put it all. That's good. It's beautiful, doesn't it? Now what that did was, we're starting to get all these ingredients cooked. It also brings down the temp of the pan a little bit. So our garlic now is toasted, but we're not burning it. I dare you, Matt, I dare you to find a piece of burnt garlic in this, this pan. Can you find a, can't find any. Can't find any, right? It's all toasted really nice. But see how dry our pan is again? Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Now, I'm gonna add off the flame, I'm gonna add a little bit of white wine. There's a base for our sauce. As far as the capers go, look at the size of these guys. Look at that, big and beautiful. They're, they're tender, they're moist, they come packed in salt. What we do is we rinse them twice, three times, drain them. Now this has a really nice caper flavor. And I don't know how you'd describe caper flavor except to say that you gotta try it. And you gotta try the right kind of caper because that's gonna make all the difference in the world. Okay, so we've got some capers in our pan now. I've got the aliche, look at that. Those white anchovies. I'm telling you, do not, do not, just try it. Just try, put a little bit off on another pan, throw the anchovies and just try it. Just give it a taste, I promise you're gonna like it. A Little bit of dried oregano. Okay, my pasta, let's see how our pasta is working. So far, how's our pasta doing? Pasta's cooking down, there we go. That's gonna be about another four minutes or so. I'm too short, huh, Matt? I'm too fast for you? I'm too fast for you, take a look. You don't believe me? There we go. Just stir it up so it doesn't stick together. Not bad, right? Matter of fact, though, you notice I didn't put any oil in the water, I didn't salt it. The reason you don't salt, I don't think you salt the water is, unless I'm gonna go in there with this big ladle or a spoon, and I'm gonna take a taste of that water. I don't know if I tasted or salted enough, not enough, too much, I don't have a clue. So I'd rather taste my sauce here on the finished end. In addition to that, we've got capers and we've got anchovies here. Capers and anchovies have a natural saltiness to them. So if we've got the pasta started off salty, possibly a little heavy handed with the salt, and then we get back over here to this dish, this dish is gonna taste like nothing but salt. So I'd rather wait until we got a little bit of a sauce right here. Pretty good so far. I'm gonna cheat and add a little bit of red wine. You know why I'm gonna add some red wine? Because I had some open, I just love the flavor of the red wine and the tuna. I know we started the dish with white wine, but nobody says I can't do it this way. I have a little tomato sauce, just a touch. Some fresh tomato sauce, mix all that up. And there we go. Okay, we're ready to go. Here we go now. Let's take our pasta first out of the water. If you're playing along at home, I've got this really fancy, expensive pasta pentola. Look at that, isn't that nice? And that's really great. If you're playing along at home though, what you want to do is if you're, like, uh, like Jesse was saying in the commercial, Jesse over here on the other camera says, well, my wife doesn't have one of those fancy pots. We do it in a colander. That's great. There's nothing wrong. There's no reason you have to go spend a lot of money. But what I would suggest you do, Jess, is when you drain the pasta, put the colander in another pot and drain the pasta and the water through the colander into the other pot. What that, that's going to do is it's going to allow you to reserve some of that pasta water. So when you find yourself with a sauce that you need to add to in the pan, it's a little dry, 
that really makes a difference to use some of that pasta water, that starchy water. And that would really be a nice little way to just kind of finish some of the flavors. All right, so here we go into the pan, some fettuccine. And we're doing it real authentic European style. I'm gonna take a spoon now. We're gonna find some of that sauce we got there. Again, I got enough for two here, so Jesse and Matt, I'm sending you both home with doggy bags today, okay boys? A real simple dish to put together. You've got some pasta in the fridge or pasta in the pantry. You've got a can of tomatoes, you got, uh, or a can of tuna, you got a tomato or two. If you got some olives, whatever you got around, this really is one of those dishes that kind of just comes together. 